Welcome to the campus of Appalachian Bible College and to our Christmas concert. It's hard to believe that Christmas is here already, but let us be the first to welcome you and to wish you a Merry Christmas. Would you stand and join us on our next song? This is a well-known Christmas carol, O Holy Night. We're going to sing three of the verses, and you can join in on all of them.
expectation.
Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And they said that his name was Jesus. The shepherds ran to see the holy child. The shepherds ran to see the holy child. The shepherds ran to see the holy child. And they said, Oh, 
And the word was made flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a child and call his name Emmanuel, God with us. came down that we may have light. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon them hath the light shined. <laughs> Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Why did he come? He, he came, came down that we may have joy. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. 
to run to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. forth a son, and she shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He came that we might have life. upon the water, how he calmed the raging sea. Somebody tell me who this child is. This child is. Oh, he is wonderful, marvelous. This child is. He is Emmanuel, God with us. This child is. Tell me who this child is. 
I invite you to be seated for just a few moments longer. Tonight we've had the privilege to find our hearts reminded of the message of Christmas as it circles the globe. A variety of carols from countries and I find myself reminded of that repeated question in that one number that was played. Why did he come down? Why did he come down? Why did he come down? More than one reason. I think the simplest of answers could be given in the verse. It's probably one of the most familiar. I'd invite you to even quote it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's not the only Christmas verse that summarizes so succinctly the message of the season. But in a message of hope and peace and rejoicing as we focus tonight, it's only possible because of the work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Tonight, my friend, if you've joined us for this musical occasion, we're thrilled you're here. But I trust that you'll not leave this place without knowing for sure that the message of this book, God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus. We remind our hearts through this season of his coming as a baby. He didn't come to be a hero or a sacrifice of martyrdom. He was not a victim. He was our substitute. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And so tonight, I can tell you the most marvelous part of the rejoicing that we can do and the provision of peace is because of the fact that the one who made necessary the barrier of God's distance from our depraved and lost hearts, bridged by the cross of Calvary, so that we might have eternal life. I trust you can say with certainty, I know Jesus as my Savior. And I'd invite you, if you can't say that, to make that need known, and we'd love to share with you more intently from the Scriptures how you can know for sure the Prince of Peace and have a heart that can rejoice. Would you bow with me, please, as we ponder that wonderful truth of heaven? And as your heads are bowed, this is not a time that I'm going to publicly ask for your response, but this is a time not to look around. It's a time to look inside, inside your heart. Do you know for sure that Jesus is your Savior? Do you have the peace that passes all understanding because his blood has cleansed your sin? and has made you now eligible to be in the presence of God. You can rejoice in that tonight, would you? Oh, Father, we thank you for the wonderful occasion of this season that we are able to be reminded so vividly and so frequently of the coming of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we live in a world that has rejected you, often despised you, and yet we can with confidence be here tonight not because we're smarter or because we're wealthier, because we're privileged in ways that we can flaunt it over others. We are humbly blessed to be the recipients of your shed blood and the mercy of your grace. For by grace are we saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, God, tonight I pray that there will not be a single person present in this audience that leaves this place without knowing for sure that Jesus is their Savior. Thank you that we can rejoice and know the peace that you give as we place our trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm Dan Anderson. It's my privilege to serve as president here at Appalachian Bible College. For those of you that might be new to our campus, we're thrilled that you've joined us tonight. Wonderful gathering and a wonderful evening to just rejoice and think of the message of this season. And thank you for doing that. I do want you to know that it's a privilege to have an opportunity to share our ministry with you on these occasions. Uh, it's so valuable for you to just see how God is giving us the privilege to serve you. And that is indeed part of our ambition. Life is for service is our motto around here, not for PR purposes, but because that's our passion. We want to serve, and thank you for letting us do that with you tonight. 
I trust that as you're here, you'll also maybe get a little more acquainted with our ministry. Uh, we have a table of literature out in the foyer area that if you've not paused by as you came in, I'd encourage you to pause there briefly as you leave tonight. And uh, by the way, as you leave, I know that every year there's always this question that's given to me is how you might be a part of our ministry and even sharing financially. This is a season of giving. You are certainly our guest tonight, and we want you to be that. But if God lays on your heart to share financially, uh, what, go, what will be given tonight, ushers will be at the doors, both of these, so that as you leave tonight, you could place an offering there that will be given in its entirety to help with student scholarships. These young people that you've seen tonight, most of them are students here. A few of us aren't, but there are those who are students, and so uh, that which you share tonight will be a part of our student scholarship program. And you might be interested to know that we'll have over, probably well over $500,000 this year that we will be sharing with these young people in different ways and different needs. And so I trust that God will lay on your heart to do that. If you didn't come prepared to do that, if you would just be so kind as to just share that at a later time, just make it out to ABC if you're a check writer or your gift. And so it would be a privilege to have you share in that way tonight. But also we're honored to have the privilege of just sharing in other ways. This is uh, our month where we allow persons to apply for coming to ABC with no charge in application. It's called December Free Application Month. And so if you have an intent or a child that might be interested, a grandchild, a friend, I'd like to encourage you to just consider the possibility of being a part of our campus family and studying God's Word, preparing to serve the Lord more effectively. And so that could either be for this coming semester in January or it could be for this coming fall and so information also will be there at the table, and some folk can help answer your questions if you have that. Other activities we have, Alpine Ministries, a variety of activities. We have some retreats coming up. You might want to pick up some of that literature, have some graduate classes. Some of you that are in ministry might want to take advantage of the privilege to just advance and prepare yourself through some of our grad studies. Online education, those of you in high school, we have some uh, advanced ABC, we call it, where you can take classes and still be in high school. And so we hope you'll take advantage of these different opportunities. All of those be referenced there. One item that's back there that I particularly like to focus on is an item which I call the President's Prayer Partners. Uh, there's a little gray card there. I've got a sample of it here in my hand. Uh, this is a ministry that each week, it's my privilege, if you are part of this through email, to every Saturday morning receive a little message of devotional thought about prayer and then some items to praise God for from the previous week's prayer request. God answers prayer that fast. And then to have some prayer requests for the current week. Uh, if you were to be on that particular uh, uh, ministry right now, you would know that one of the prayer requests that you got this morning was pray for our Christmas concerts tonight and tomorrow. And by the way, we'll do this again tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. You're welcome to come back if that's possible. Invite friends to join you. But if you're not a part of the President's Prayer Partners, take a moment and pause at the table. Just complete the information. Your name and your email address will not abuse that information for other purposes. And if it's such you don't use email, uh, I call it snail mail if you don't, not to insult the postal system. Just an easy way to keep it separate. You can put your snail mail address here, and once a month you'll receive an update of fresh prayer requests and information about our ministry. It's a great way to be in contact with us. I hope you'll join the hundreds of folk who are part of the President's Prayer Partners in that way. One of the things we've done through the years for you that have been a part of our Christmas concerts is we make possible after the concert tonight for you to visit our residence halls for an open house time. And uh, we tried to have them make sure that they, you know, made their beds and that kind of stuff. Really, I had nothing to do with it. I just get to advertise it. And so tonight, McCarroll Hall, directly across from the chapel here, or if you move down the hill a ways and to your right, the first building, Displains Hall, or don't forget, if you move across in front of our main administration building, you'll see a building to uh, the distance called Hoops Hall. We have residence halls, each of those three, and you're welcome to attend there. Now, this is for students more than you as guests. Students, you're able to be in one another's dorms until 1030, but then out of there. <laughs> Did you hear me say that? Out of there. Now, I'm not worried they will do that. They're good students. But uh, until 1030 this evening, they'll be open for your visiting. Students have decorated in preparation. Some even have some refreshments for you. So you might go through and see where the best food is. I can't promise where it is. I've not been through them. But I know that they've done a lot of work in preparing for that. So I know that you've enjoyed this tonight. And so I appreciate so much the work of our music faculty under the chairmanship of Jeremy Yal and then those who have joined as part of that faculty in preparing and then all of the students and and the parents of the children, aren't they just the cutest bugs that you could ever see on screen, huh? 
Uh, would you give another round of applause to this bunch as they've done this? So great job tonight. Thank you so much. I do trust that you will take advantage of this season to share the Lord Jesus. I share with our campus family, this is the easiest time of the year to witness because there's so much reference to Christmas. And while the world doesn't really understand it, we can always change that. And so God help us to be faithful witnesses for him. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going to ask that the students just make their way down through the aisles right now so they can greet you as we dismiss in just a moment. And so students, just make your way directly down and spread through the aisles. And again, thank you for joining our campus tonight and visiting. God bless you in your ministries tomorrow. And I remind you again, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, you're welcome to return or to encourage others to be here. I want to say a special word of thanks as the students are dismissing to these areas. I'm so thankful for you that have brought different groups from your churches. I've been able to greet some of those prior to the service tonight. And so I thank you for just making that extra effort as a group of you have come from your church. It's a privilege to serve you, and we trust that you will find your hearts included. Uh, go down all the aisles, students. We don't want to just congest the middle ones here, okay? This is uncharted waters for them. They didn't know, uh, you know, we didn't practice this part. And so would you stand with me, please? And uh, may I just say on behalf of Mrs. A and myself, my lovely first lady down here and our entire staff, we want to say Merry Christmas. God bless you, and may we be truly effective servants for him. God bless you. You are dismissed.